So Al, you did the 27.5 category yeah. um, this year, and that's the same as last year as well, isn't it? So what are the bikes that you had in your test? The bikes were pretty similar to last year too. We had um, the Commissar Meta was the winner last year, so it came back to defend its title. Um, Giant made some revisions to the Trance, so we had that back. And then there was a brand new bike from Merida called the 140. Then we've got the new Canyon Spectral that we have here. So obviously the, the, the Canyon was the winner in this test. Was that a pretty clear cut thing? Yes and no. I mean, the Meta won last year for a reason. It's a, it's a great bike. Suspension's really good. The sizing's really good. And what's actually interesting when you look at the numbers, that the numbers on the new Canyon are really close to the Meta, right. which they already, so they were kind of like a year ahead in terms of the sizing. There's been a lot of talk about Spectral having like radically new geometry and sizing and stuff. And the truth is, this bike's only five millimeters longer than last year's bike. The big change in the geometry is that the BB height's 10 mil lower. So that makes the bike just feel like so much more stable, even though like the wheelbase hasn't grown and the size is not really that much bigger. And um, the bike's just like way more stable. So the ride quality, in terms of the fit and the sizing, they're really similar between the, the Spectral and the Meta. Spectral's got a carbon front end, slightly higher specification, so it's a little bit lighter too. The biggest difference though between these two bikes is the tires. The Meta's run 2.3 inch tires front and rear. This bike's got 2.6 inch tires, like it's fast approaching a plus bike. And the amount of grip that you get with the bigger volume tires and the extra cushioning and isolation you get is really pronounced. But what made the biggest difference is it had C3 compound tires front and rear, yep. so you've got softer rubber. So not only do you have like more rubber on the ground with the bigger tire, mm -hmm. the rubber's better. Yeah. So you've just got like so much more grip, so much more confidence and like it's kind of crazy that I mean one of the reasons why we change tires on bikes is because it makes such a difference mm. and I think this test really highlighted that. Yeah. I think manufacturers are really starting to kind of iron out the creases in their specs and the, and the tires definitely nowadays you, you get really good tires yeah. as stock on, on most bikes now so it's becoming less of an issue. It is less of an issue but it's still it's one area that, that um, like Giant got it wrong too. Right. And on the Trans, it had 68 tires front and rear. Um, Merida had a combination, which is kind of more normal. You get a softer yep. front tire and a harder wear and rear tire, faster rolling. But yeah, this bike's just got C3 compound front and rear, loads of grip, goes with the geometry. You've got the suspension feel to match. It's just, it just gives you so much more confidence when you're riding the bike. When you say that the geometry and sizing is, is pretty similar to the previous Spectral, but then there must have been some other changes to yeah, the for bike sure. that I mean, this, made it seem. Like, I mean, it's visually, it looks like a completely different bike. Mm. Um, and they've taken a lot of the cues, the design cues, from the Sender downhill bike. So you've got this kind of like extended seat mast and lower top tube, um, which is- It, it doesn't have a, um, an external no, clamp no, on there. There's no, it's got a little internal clamp. And it's actually pretty tricky to get it right. So it's got like a bigger contact area with the seat post. So if you actually over tighten it, your seat post won't go up and down. Okay. And if you have it too loose, when you go into a corner and like lean the seat against the inside of your thighs, it so it'll move, it'll yep. rotate. Um, but it comes with a little torque wrench with it, so it's like pretty easy to set as long as you use it. And yeah, it's got a little rubber bung on here, a bit like a yep. white, just yep. to keep the dirt out and stuff. Um, but the biggest thing that it's taken from the sender is like the suspension rate. So the bike's pretty supple at the start, a bit more mid-stroke support, and then it's like rampy at the end. And I'd say like our biggest criticism with the old version was that it was sensitive, but yeah. it just had no support. Okay. So you just hit something, you go boom, straight through the 140 mil travel. I mean, that's, that's the other thing. This bike's got the same travel that the old one had. 140 rear, 150 front. How, how does that compare to the other bikes in the test? Well, it's pretty much the same for the Merida and the Giant. And they both had like 150, 140. And the common salad less. It still had 10 mil more in the front. So it had a 140 fork and a 130 rear. So it's kind of like, that seems to be, at least in the 27.5 category anyway, that the bikes all have a little bit more fork travel mm -hmm. than they have rear travel. Mm -hmm. Did you no notice the, the difference mm -hmm. in rear travel between the different No, you bikes? don't you, you don't notice it at all, especially with because the common style's got good suspension. Yeah. And I think what, what actually the common style highlighted is the different tune in the pike fork. Um, where like RockShox has made like a slightly firmer tune in the fork to make it more yeah. sporty to differentiate it from Lyric. And you notice in the common style because it's so it's got such a nice feel to the rear suspension that like the fork feels a little bit out of sync with it. Okay. This bike, it seemed more balanced yep. in that respect than the Meta. I would say though that there were a couple of occasions, I ride flat pedals exclusively on test bikes, um, and there were a couple of occasions where my left foot would get bounced on this bike. Okay. And I don't know if that's a result of like pedal kickback or maybe the ramp in the suspension being just a little bit fierce in certain situations. I mean, it only happened once 
every other ride or something right. like that. I just noticed my foot hop on the pedal. And but you said it, it happened in the same spot Same situation. Every time. Yeah, it seemed to be when the gradient wasn't so steep and you're like carrying loads of speed and you just go through a load of like, like roots. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I could get it to do it every time I rode that trail. But the flip side of that is that when you're going down something steeper, the bike just accelerates. Like you go through like a compression or a hole and instead of it kind of like sinking into it and then having to like recompose itself and come out, it just shoots out like right. straight away. It's, I mean, it's really, really rapid. So you get that um, acceleration from the support and the progression. Yeah, and, may and maybe that's actually part of the progression and also part of the fact that, I mean, it feels a bit like a, sing like a high single pivot in that respect. Okay. In that right. it basically has just got that kind of zip that you get out yeah. of corners. Um, and it, like, it's everything, it's a trade-off. And I'm happy with the trade-off. That little bounce I get, like once every yeah. other ride, that's never gonna happen to yeah. you. And in, in return, you've got a bike that pedals really efficiently, feels really nippy. And like the geometry and size is not so progressive that it feels like you're riding like a, like a big enduro bike. Mm. So like on the jumps and the tight trails and yeah. stuff, it's just, it's just so much fun yeah. to like slam into corners and stuff. And it's a really dynamic bike. And so that wasn't the only reason this felt fast, was it? It, it was, it's, a, it's a light. It is light, test, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's almost a kilo kilo lighter than some of the other bikes. Right. So, and like, particularly the common style is. Yeah, as well. common yeah. style. The heaviest bike in the category was the Merida. Yeah. Um, but like the Merida and the common style are pretty close. So, so yeah, it's a lightweight bike. Um, great tires, great spec. It's also got some like really neat features. Like one of them is this thing here. It's got like this little pop out quick release lever. Okay, yeah, so neat. you don't have to have an Allen key for the rear. You can just pop it out, unwind it, put it back in. It doesn't stick out. What's yeah. this uh, thing on the head tube that's bolted on there? This is like a little steering lock. It's kind of similar to what's on the track, but this one's got like a full, pretty much 90 degree okay. steering it, lock. So the you fork's can, not going to contact the down tube there. It's so. not because it's still got the curve. Really all yeah. it's for is that on the smaller sizes or if you want to run your handlebars lower, your controls basically right. don't, don't smash into your top yeah. tube, which is like, like a pet peeve of mine really is on a bike where if you crash and you wrap it around mm. and next thing you know you smash your shifter off or you put a big old gouge out of your top tube so that's a really neat and, feature and does that restrict you on like no, switch back climbs or anything i mean no. if you're at if you're at 90 degrees you're going over the bars yeah, yeah. you know or you're i mean on a, on a, on a switch yeah. back descent yeah, yeah. you're going over the bars on a climb you're going nowhere because yeah. you can't drive the bike forward with the wheel at 90 yeah. degrees so so yeah that's there's no issue with that whatsoever um, uh, and it looks like the the got the kind of internal cable route in there but it, it, yeah it's it? kind of internal external so they've got this cover that runs the whole way down the down tube and the, so the cables are run outside of the down tube but inside of the cover ah. so the cover bolts on doubles as a frame protector and like cable housing so you kind of get the best of both worlds and um, that might just be to make it easier to assemble the bikes in the factory yeah, yeah. Because well, you don't have to go. And also th working yeah. on it at home. Oh, totally. If you yeah. I mean, if you want to take a break off or re replace an outer, it's really, really easy. And, and like, and I think it looks really neat. And it's got some cool little things too. It's got like three little mounts here where there's a little box goes in there. Okay. You can put an inner tube or some food or maybe yeah. like a CO2 canister. And they've really thought through like, all the details on the bike. So. And, and where did this sit in, the, in terms of price? So with the 27.5 bikes, we're pretty cl closely grouped. There's only 200 pounds separating the bikes, and you're getting a full carbon frame. You're getting a lighter weight build. You're getting everything you want too. You're getting like a 150 mil reverb. You've got Eagle on there, so you've got a 52 tooth cog. You can get it, climb up everything on it. It's got guide brakes, DT Swiss wheels. It's a lot of bike for the money, that's for it's sure. It's a stack of bike for the money. And like, there's nothing on it that you just think, oh, that's a little bit of a peeve, or, you know, I'm not sure about that. I mean, the seat angle's steep, so you can climb pretty good, even though it's got like super short chainstay. And um, the seat angle is nice and steep, and you're forward on the bike, so it's not like kind of wallowing and and like the front end's not lifting when you're climbing. The bike's tight, it's low, the sizing's good. Yeah, I really liked it. Like, I mean, like straight away I got on it and, and I was like, okay, you can ride hard in this mm. bike. You can have so much fun. And we've ridden the top end one too. And, the, and all of the, even from like the most expensive bike it has the same feel. It doesn't get diluted okay. on the cheaper bikes, which I think is like quite an accomplishment from Canyon. I would say on the rear shock that like all the rock shock shocks we've had, run them pretty close to wide open on rebound. So I don't think the range of adjustments as good as it is on the Fox shock. I think you can still get a setup that's good, but if you're like, you know, like sub 70 kilos, you might need to get like a reaching on the shock or whatever, or just okay. get some lighter oil in there yeah. because um, it's not that the rebound's super slow, it's just you might not be able to get it fast enough. And, and you, you rated it 10 out of 10, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it it's, it's, it's um, pretty close to perfection, if not. Yeah, and I had no, no qualms about giving it like top marks. Mm. It wasn't like a, mm, maybe you should, uh, you know, mm. there was no women in that about it. It's like, this, like it's a standout bike. Um, it's best in class, and it's the only bike that got 10 out of 10 in the entire test. So in that respect, 
that makes it our trail bike of the year across the whole board. Yeah, so, yeah for sure. Spectral's got a carbon front end, um, slightly higher specification, um, so it's a little bit lighter too. Um, 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 um,